Welcome to this .NET Maui Controls tutorial video, part of a series by Coding Droplets. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create beautiful and functional apps using .NET Maui Controls. These controls are an essential part of any app development project, and mastering them can help you create apps that provide an exceptional user experience. Throughout this series, we'll cover a range of different controls, from simple buttons and labels to more advanced controls like controls to display a collection of data. In this video, we'll start with an introduction to .NET Maui controls, including how to use them, what they can do, and how they can benefit your app development projects. So keep watching to find out how .NET Maui controls can revolutionize the way you create apps. I've created a new .NET Maui app project. Now the first thing we need to do is create a folder to store our content pages. We'll call this folder Pages. Next, we'll create a new content page inside Pages folder. I'm naming it as Common Controls. In this content page, we'll be adding some of the most commonly used controls in .NET Maui. By placing these controls in our page, we'll be able to see how they work and how we can customize them to fit our app's design. Now let's add a scroll view to this page. Scroll view will allow us to scroll down the page if the content is too large to fit on the screen. Let's take a look at our first control, the frame. This control allows us to wrap a view or layout with a customizable border. We can configure this border with options such as color, shadow and more. To see the frame in action, let's run our app in Android emulator. But before we do that, we need to assign our content page as the main page in app.xaml.cs. Now you can see a white area at the top of the page which represents the frame. To make the frame more visible, let's add some margin to it. As you can see now, the frame is now clearly visible. We can also customize the background color of the frame. Let's assign it the same color as the content page. Now you can see that both the page and the frame have the same color. Next, we'll place a vertical stack layout inside the frame and add a label inside the layout. As you may know, a label is used to display single line and multi line text, and we have used labels in our previous videos. For this demo, I'm going to provide the label text as coding droplets. Now, if you take a look at the emulator, you can see the label being displayed inside the frame. Let's format the label by providing the font size, color, and centering it horizontally. As you can see in the emulator, the label is displayed with the provided format. Next, I'll copy a new image to Maui Resources and display the logo above the label. To achieve this, we can make use of the image control and provide the image file name in the source property. Additionally, I'm assigning the height request property to set the height of the image. If you look at the emulator now, you can see the coding droplets logo displayed above the label. Let's also assign some margin for the label to create some space between the label and the logo image. As you can see in the emulator, we now have a good amount of space between the label and the logo image. Next, I'll demonstrate how to use the border control in Maui to provide a border for a label. To start, I'm placing a frame in the page and inside it, I'm placing a label with the text Welcome and assigning the horizontal options property as Sender. By placing the label inside the border control, we can add a border to it. Upon running the app on the emulator, you can see the label is now displayed inside a box. Let's add some padding to the border control and increase the border thickness by assigning the stroke thickness property of the border. Additionally, I am assigning a different color for the border by providing the stroke property of the border and setting the background color of the border using the background color property. For this example, I will assign the same color as the page. Now, upon running the app on the emulator, you can see the label inside a thick red border, which makes it stand out on the page. We'll now explore the web view control, which enables the display of remote web pages, local HTML files, and HTML strings within the app. By assigning the URL of the page to be displayed in the source property of the web view, we can easily load the page in our app. To demonstrate this, I have set the source property to the URL of Coding Droplets GitHub page. Let's take a look at how it appears in the emulator. 
As you can see, the page content is now displayed within the app, allowing us to view it seamlessly. Before we move on to the next set of controls, let's create a new content page that allows us to navigate between different types of control pages. We'll call this page main page and set its title and background color. Next, we'll create a design with flex layout as we have discussed in the previous videos and a button that will navigate to the common controls page. We'll provide a click event to handle the navigation. To ensure that our new content page is displayed when the app launches, we need to change the main page in app.xaml.cs. We'll set the main page as the root page of the navigation page so that we can see the navigation bar and we'll also assign a custom bar background color for the navigation bar. Let's run the application in the Android emulator to see how it works. You can now see a button labeled Common Controls and clicking on it will navigate to our Common Controls page. In this section of the video, we'll take a look at the controls that are commonly used to trigger actions in a .NET MAUI application. To do this, we'll create a new content page called Action Controls. To begin, we'll place a vertical stack layout inside a scroll view. This will allow us to scroll through the controls on the page if they don't fit within the visible area. Next, we'll add a frame to the page. Inside this frame, we'll place a button. We'll name the button Demo button and assign a background color. The text of the button will be Click Me. When the button is clicked, we want to display a message box pop up. To do this, we'll call the display alert method in the button's click event. The display alert method takes three parameters the title of the message box pop up, the message content, and the cancel text, which is a text displayed on the button to close the message box. Before we run the application, we'll need to create a new button on the main page to navigate to the action controls page. We'll call this button action controls. Now let's run the application in an emulator. You should see the action controls button on the main page. When you click this button, it will navigate to the action controls page. On the action controls page, you'll see the demo button. When you click this button, you should see a message box pop up with the title coding droplets, the message content and an OK button to close the message box. Next, we are exploring a different type of button control called image button. First, we'll place this new button control inside a frame. Let's name the button as demo image button. To display an image in the button, we need to provide the image source. For that, we'll copy a new image to the Maui resources and provide the same image name in the image button's source property. Next, we'll create a click event for this button and assign its height using the height request property. In the click event, we'll show a different message using the same display alert method. Now let's run the application in the emulator. You can see the download button, which is using our image. If you click the button, the application will show a pop-up message. Image buttons are a great way to add visual interest to your application and using them is very easy with Maui. Now let's see the search bar control in .NET Maui. The search bar control allows users to search for content within the app. First, we'll be placing the control inside a frame and naming it Demo Search Bar. We'll also set up the search button clicked event which will be triggered when the user searches for a content. Inside the event, we'll display the searched content in a pop-up message using the demo search bar dot text property to retrieve the searched content. Let's test it in the emulator. You can see the search bar and when you enter text and click the search button, a pop-up message will appear displaying the entered text. The search bar control is a useful tool for allowing users to search for content within your app and can help improve the user experience by making it easier to find the desired information. Now let's have a look at the swipe view control, which is a container control that provides context menu items through swipe gestures. First, we'll add a swipe view to our page and place a vertical stack layout inside it, which contains a label with the text this is a swipe view. In the emulator, we can see the swipe view control, but it won't react to swiping because we need to configure it further. 
To enable swiping, we must specify which direction we want to swipe in. For example, we can enable swiping from left to right by adding swipe view dot left items and providing the swipe items. Inside swipe items, we can create multiple swipe item objects. Let's create two swipe item objects, Facebook swipe item and Instagram swipe item. For the Facebook swipe item, we'll assign a background color and an icon using icon image source property. I'm adding some social media icons to Maui resource folder. Let's use these images for the icon. We'll also provide an invoked event which will be triggered when a user clicks on the item. Inside the invoked event, we'll show a pop-up message. For the Instagram swipe item, we'll do the same by providing an invoked event and showing a message pop-up. When we run the application in the emulator and swipe from left to right, we can see the two items we created. Clicking on either of them will display a message box with the text we provided. Note that we can't swipe from right to left because we haven't added any items on the right. We'll explore how to add right items now. To do this, we'll be using the swipe view dot right items property and creating two new swipe item objects inside swipe items. Let's add Twitter swipe item and LinkedIn swipe item. Then we can add the invoked event for both the swipe items to display a message when they are clicked. Now let's see the swipe view in action in the emulator. You'll notice that we have four swipe items displayed, two on the left and two on the right. Clicking on any of the swipe items will trigger the invoked event and display a message. In this section, let's take a look at the controls that are used for user inputs. First, we'll create a new content page named Input Controls and make some arrangements in the content page. Next, we'll add an entry control to the page. The entry control has a property named Placeholder, which we'll set as Enter Text Here. Now let's try running the application on an Android emulator. But before that, we need to create a new button in the main page to navigate to the newly created content page. Now we can see the new button named Input Controls on the main page, which will navigate us to the new content page. Here we have our entry control and we can see the placeholder as well. When we type in the entry control, the placeholder will be hidden. We can even provide a custom color for the placeholder by assigning the placeholder color property of the entry control. Let's set it to red. Now in the emulator, we can see the placeholder displayed in a red color. Now let's move on to the next control, the editor control. The editor control is used to enter and edit multiple lines of text. It also has a property named placeholder, which is used to display a prompt message in the control. In this case, we are just setting the placeholder text as editor. After making the required changes, let's see the control in action in the emulator. As you can see, the editor control is displayed on the screen and we can enter multiple lines of text. We can also set the auto size property of the editor control. In this case, we are setting it to text changes. This means that the editor control will automatically adjust its size based on the content entered into it. Now we will discuss the checkbox control. Checkbox is a type of button that can either be checked or empty. When a checkbox is checked, it is considered to be on. When a checkbox is empty, it is considered to be off. Let's see how the checkbox control works in the emulator. As you can see, the checkbox control allows us to check and uncheck it. However, what if we need a text along with the checkbox? In this case, we can place a checkbox inside a horizontal stack layout and place a label next to it. Now you can see in the emulator that we have a checkbox with text. Now we will learn about radio buttons. Radio buttons are a type of input control that allow users to select one option from a group of options. To demonstrate this, we will place a vertical stack layout inside a frame as we need to add multiple radio buttons. The radio button control has a property named content in which we can specify the text to be displayed. Initially, we have one radio button with the provided text. However, we can add multiple radio buttons by placing them inside the stack layout. 
In the emulator, we can see the radio buttons and select any one of them. By default, only one radio button can be selected at a time. However, if we need to enable multiple selections, we can use the group name property of the radio button control. For the first three radio buttons, we have set the group name property as group 1. Similarly, for the other three radio buttons, we have set the group name property as group 2. In the emulator, we can now select one of the first three radio buttons as well as one of the other three radio buttons. This allows for two different selections to be made. Now we'll explore the slider control. A slider is a horizontal bar that allows users to select a double value from a continuous range. You can manipulate the slider by moving it left and right. The slider control has a property named minimum which we can assign to set the minimum value of the slider. Similarly, it also has a property named maximum to assign the maximum value of the slider. The slider control has a value changed event that can be used to listen for changes in the slider value. Let's add a label below the slider to show the current value of the slider. We'll name the label slider value label and set its text to the current value of the slider in the value changed event handler. By running the application, we can see the label now displays a double value as we move the slider left and right. In our example, we have assigned a maximum property value of 100 and a minimum value of 1. Therefore, the slider value can range from 1 to 100. If we need to display integer values, we can simply convert the double value to an integer. As a result, the emulator will display integer values instead of decimal values. Next, we'll take a look at the slider control's additional properties. The slider control has a maximum track color property that we can use to set the color of the track to the right of the slider. Let me assign a red color to the maximum track color property. Now in the emulator, you can see that the track to the right of the slider is in red. Similarly, we can also set the color of the track to the left of the slider using the minimum track color property. Let me assign black color to the minimum track color property. Now in the emulator, you can see that the track to the left of the slider is in black. In addition to the color properties, we can also change the color of the thumb, which is the draggable part of the slider. Let me assign green color to the thumb color property. Now in the emulator, you can see that the thumb of the slider is in green color. Instead of using the default round thumb, we can also use an image as the thumb of the slider. Let me copy a new image to the Maui resources and assign it to the thumb image source property of the slider. Now in the emulator, you can see that the slider is showing a diamond image as the thumb instead of the previous circle thumb. Next, let's look at the stepper control. We'll assign the horizontal options property to sender to align it to the sender. You can see that the stepper control has two buttons, a plus button and a minus button. This is how the stepper control looks. The stepper control also has a value changed property that we can use to listen for value changes. We can set the maximum and minimum properties for the stepper control to assign the maximum and minimum values. Additionally, the stepper control has a property named increment that allows us to set the increment value on each click. In the value changed event, I'm displaying a message pop-up with the current value of the stepper as the message content. When I change the value in the stepper, the message pop-up is immediately displayed showing the current value. The stepper control can go up to a maximum of 20 as we have set the maximum value to 20. Once we reach 20, the plus button will be disabled. Similarly, the stepper control can go down to a minimum of 4 as we have set the minimum value to 4. Once we reach 4, the minus button will be disabled. The next control in this tutorial is the switch control. The switch control is a horizontal toggle button that can be manipulated by the user to toggle between on and off states, which are represented by a boolean value. To align the control in the center of the screen, the horizontal options property has been assigned the value center. When running the application in the Android emulator, the switch control can be seen 
and clicking it changes its state from on to off or vice versa, representing a boolean value. The next control we'll be discussing is the date picker control. The date picker control allows users to select a date by invoking the platform's date picker control. This control is used to facilitate date selection. As you can see in the emulator, clicking on the date picker control opens a calendar view in which user can select a date. This is a very useful control for mobile apps that require date selection. Next, let's take a look at the time picker control. The time picker control allows the user to select a specific time by invoking the platform's time picker control. This control includes options for selecting the hour, minute, and AM or PM designation. As you can see, when I click on the time picker control, a dialog box pops up displaying a clock face with the options to select the hour and minute. Additionally, I can toggle between AM and PM by clicking the corresponding button. With the time picker control, users can easily and accurately select a specific time, making it a valuable tool in any application that requires time-based input. In this section, we'll explore some indicator controls used to indicate a user's progress within an application. Let's begin by creating a new content page and naming it Indicator Controls. We'll also need a new button on our main page to navigate to this new page. Now let's take a closer look at the Activity Indicator Control. Running the application in the emulator, we can see that the Indicator Controls page is empty. To display the activity indicator, we need to assign the ease running property of the control to true. Once we do this, the activity indicator becomes visible. To demonstrate how to change the ease running property from the code, let's add a button with the text activity indicator below the activity indicator control. We'll also assign a name to the activity indicator control so that we can access it from the code. In the buttons clicked event, We'll assign the ease running property of the activity indicator control to its opposite value, allowing us to start or stop the animation. After running the application in the emulator, we can see that the indicator control is initially running. Once we click the activity indicator button, it stops running. And if we click it again, it resumes its animation. Moving on to the progress bar control, we can assign float values from 0 to 1 to the progress property to indicate progress within the application. For example, assigning a value of 0.5 would display the progress as 50%. We can also change the color of the progress bar by assigning the progress color property. Now the progress is showing in red color. Next, we'll explore some controls that enable drawing functionalities. To begin with, we'll create a new content page named Drawing Controls. The first control we'll see is the box view. It has a width request property to assign the width, which we will set to 200. It also has a height request property to assign the height, which we'll set to 100. To center it, we'll assign the horizontal options property. In addition, we need to create a new button in the main page to navigate to the newly created content page. After running the application, we can observe a black rectangle in the emulator. To modify it, we'll change the color to brown. Additionally, we can utilize the corner radius property to curve the corners. As a result, you can see a brown rectangle with curved corners in the emulator. Moving on, let's explore the rectangle control. The rectangle class is derived from the shape class and can be used to draw rectangles and squares on the screen. Similar to the box view control, the rectangle control also provides width request and height request properties to set the dimensions of the shape. Additionally, the fill property can be used to assign a fill color to the rectangle. Running the application in the emulator will display a black rectangle on the screen. To make the rectangles corners curved, we can set the radius x and radius y values. Furthermore, we can customize the appearance of the rectangle by assigning different colors to its stroke property. In this example, we are using the color red as the stroke color and increasing its thickness by assigning a value to the stroke thickness property. Running the application in the emulator again will display the newly customized rectangle shape on the screen. 
The next control we are going to see is the line control. The line class also derives from the shape class and it is used to draw lines in a user interface. To draw a line, we can use the x1, x2, y1 and y2 properties. These properties allow us to set the starting and ending points of the line. Additionally, we can use the stroke property to assign the color of the line and the stroke thickness property to assign the thickness. After drawing the line, we can adjust the x and y values to position the line in the desired location. In the emulator, you can see the blue line we have drawn with a thick stroke. Overall, the line control is a simple and useful tool for drawing lines in a user interface. In the next section, we'll discuss the ellipse control in .NET MAUI. The ellipse control which derives from the shape class can be used to draw ellipses and circles. We can set the fill property to assign the fill color of the ellipse. In this tutorial, we'll set it to green. We are able to see only a thin line in the emulator because we have not yet assigned the width and height of the ellipse. To fix this, we can set the width request property to 150 and the height request property to 100. Additionally, we can also set the stroke color using the stroke property. To make the stroke thicker, we can set the stroke thickness property to a higher value. After adjusting these properties, the emulator will display an ellipse with a green fill color and a thick black stroke. The next control we look at is the polygon control. The polygon class, like the previously discussed controls, also derives from the shape class and can be used to draw polygons closed shapes that are formed by connected series of lines. To create a polygon, we can use the points property to specify the points of the shape. For demonstration purpose, some points are provided. We can use the fill property to assign a fill color to the polygon. For this example, let's assign the fill color as orange. In the emulator, we can now see an orange polygon drawn based on the provided points. We can also assign a stroke color and a stroke thickness to the polygon. In the emulator, we can see the orange polygon with a black thick stroke. The next control we look at is the polyline. Polyline is also derived from the shape class and can be used to draw connected series of lines. Similar to the polygon control, we can use the points property to specify the points that form the polyline. We can assign the color of the line using the stroke property and set the thickness of the line using the stroke thickness property. Once these properties are set, we can see the drawn polyline in the emulator. The next control we'll explore is the path control. The path class, again, derived from the shape class and it can be used to draw curves and complex shapes which are often described using geometry objects. The path control has a data property in which we can specify the shape to be drawn. To generate this data, we typically use third-party applications which we will cover in an upcoming session. We'll begin by assigning the stroke property to black and set stroke thickness property to 2. We'll set the aspect property to uniform which specifies how the content of the path control is scaled to fit within the bounds of the control. Finally, we'll align the control to the center by assigning the horizontal options property. Next, we'll provide the data that we generated using a third-party tool to the data property. Once we run the application, we can see how the drawing looks like in the emulator. In this case, we can see an image of a bird sitting inside a cage, which has been drawn by the provided data. The path control provides a way to draw any kind of images, provided that we have the corresponding data for it. That's it for this tutorial on .NET MAUI controls. We have covered some most commonly used controls including label, button, image, entry and more. In the upcoming sessions, we'll dive deeper into more advanced controls such as those used to display collections of data and explore other features of .NET MAUI. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Coding Droplets for more .NET Marvel tutorials and other programming content. Thanks for watching.